Hello everyone. In the previous video, we have discussed about a basic program in Java. And in this video, we are going to discuss about types of operators in Java. So operators are the construct which can manipulate the value of operands. For example, you can see that this particular operation 2 plus 3 equals to 5. So this 2 and 3 can be said as operands and this plus can be said as an operator in Java. So now the value of 2 and 3 you can directly initialize also or you can take the input from the user also. So the expression here 2 plus 3 equals to 5. Here 2 and 3 are the operands and the plus is called operator. This is just a basic knowledge about the operator and the operands. Now the goal of this video is that I could cover all the operator types in the Java. So now we are going to discuss about the types of operator in Java or how many types of operator Java actually provides. So the first operator is the arithmetic operators. Next we have assignment operators. The third type of operator is logical, relational, the unary operators, the sixth type of operator is bitwise operator. Next we have as ternary operator. And the last operator is shift operator. So these are the eight types of operators in Java that is arithmetic, assignment, logical, relational, unary, bitwise, ternary and shift operator. We are going to discuss one by one about each and then execute a program to see its implementation. So the first type of operator in Java is the arithmetic operator and arithmetic as the name suggests is actually used to perform mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and the modulus. So the arithmetic operator consists of addition minus multiplication, the division and the modulus division. So addition as we all know is used to add two particular values and subtract the right hand operator with the left hand operator that is a minus b is for subtraction. Similarly multiplication, multiplication of either side of the operator and then division. Now this division divides the left hand operator with the right hand of the operator. Whereas how it is different from this modulus division? Modulus division actually returns the user or the programmer the remainder. That means it divides the left hand operand by the right hand operand and returns us the remainder. For example, is two, if 5 is done the modulus division with 2, then division occurs as simple as we actually do the division. But if you execute this particular division command between two operators, then it will return you the value 1. That is the remainder which has been left. So this is how modulus division occurs. Now the question arises is, how can we actually write a Java program for seeing the output or seeing the implementation of arithmetic operators. So we have discussed the basic hello world program in the previous class and now what we are going to do is we are going to after initialization of the void main. So to write a particular code firstly I am going to initialize two variables assigning two variables so that these operators arithmetic operators can work. So if I am assigning the value of a as 5 and b as equals to 2. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize the value int a and int b as 2. Firstly, after the void main method which I have initialized. And then next, using the system.outprintln statement, I'm writing SOP in short form. I'm going to just insert these particular values that I need to print the values of a plus b. Similarly, for a minus b, a multiplication with b, the division, and then the modulo division. So this is what I'm going to execute. So this is the basic hint or the basic structure of the program that I'm going to write. Now let us write in the Eclipse ID. So here you can see my Eclipse workspace and firstly what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize the two values 
of A and B and then I am going to see that how operators work in that. So firstly I am going to initialize the first variable that is int A and I am printing the value as 2 and next I am going to initialize the second variable that is B and I am sending the value of B variable as 2. So these are the two variables which I have initialized. Next with the help of SOP statements I am going to print the exact conditions of the operators which I want to fetch and what we have discussed we are going to simply write that in system.outprintln a plus b and all the operators and that will print directly the values. Next what I am going to do is I am going to write the system.outprintln And in this brackets, I'm going to mention that what I want to print. So I will write that firstly, I want the addition of both the variables and semicolon for ending the syntax. So firstly, it will print me the summation or the additions of the variable int a and int b. Similarly, I have to write for the subtraction, multiplication, division and the modulo division. So why to write the same code again? I have to just print the system statement again. So just change a bit here a minus b and here I have to change for a multiplication. All the system dot out print talent statements are going to print it and in the v what I am going to print is the division. And similarly here I am going to print about the modulo division of A and B and see that what the value get return. So for modulo division we use the n percent sign that will display the modulo division. So here you can see that I have written the code for the operators for displaying the arithmetic operators in Java with the help of system.outprintln statement. Now I am going to save this particular file. Just press control s and this hello.java is saved. And next what I am going to do is I am going to run this particular file. And as I run this particular file in the console window, here you can see the output. Let me broaden a bit for you. Here you can see that the summation of 5 plus 2 that is 7. And here you can see the use of ln. If I have not used this ln particularly, then what it will be done, it will be printing in the same line 7, 3, 10, 2 and 1. But here it is printed in separate lines and next new line. So that is the use of ln. And then the minus 5 minus 2 that is 3. The multiplication 5 into 2 that is 10. The division that is 5 into 2 divided by it is returning me the quotient. The normal division returns as the quotient. So that is returning you 2. But the modulo division returns as the remainder which I have discussed. So hence it returns us 1. This is how arithmetic operators work in Java. And this is a very simple program for the execution of arithmetic operators. Next we are going to discuss about the assignment operators in Java. So we are done with the discussion and the programs of arithmetic operator and next comes this assignment operator. Assignment as the name suggests it is used to assign the values to any particular new variable to assign the values. Now previously we know that in the previous arithmetic program we used the value of a as 5 and the b value we used as 2. So now let's see the operator in this particular assignment. So this particular equal to operator which we use is actually used to assign the value to the right side operand or to the left side operand. That means this particular value actually assigns this value to this operator, this particular variable. So this operator is used to assign the value that a value is 5. That is a use of equal to operator. Now we can also see that there is an operator plus equal to. This operator it adds the right operand to the left operand and assigns the result to the left open. For example, you can see that if I write this particular statement as a plus equals to 5, that means this is actually added to the operand and then assigning the value of the result. Similarly is a minus equals to 5 also. Firstly, the subtraction is done and then it is assigned the value to the left of the operand. Similarly, for multiplication also and for division and the modulo division also. The new operator which is here is that this power equal to operator. Now, what does it does? 
it performs the exponential power we know that this particular is used for calculation of power which we usually write in program 2 power something so this is actually for the power so here if i write for this variable then what it is going to do is it is going to raise the power calculation of the operand and assign the value to the left side so these are the assignment operator which are used to assign new value to any particular variable now how can we write a particular program so firstly we have these two values a and b that is for sure next what we're going to do is we are going to initialize a new variable also and for that we know that the syntax will be in c because we are operating on all the integer type of data so the variable or the data type will be int after doing that in the system dot out print element, firstly what we are going to do is we are going to assign the value of a to c so for that we know that we can just simply write in the sop statement system dot out print element statement that a equal to a that will change the value of c to a that means c will be also having the value 10 next what we are going to do is in the sop statement we are going to operate for b plus equals to a that means the value of b will be added to the value of a which is actually there so if we are saying that the value of b is 2 then that value will be added to this particular operator and the output will be generated what is the value of b here the value of b here is 2 and a here is 5 so okay we have changed the value to 10 here then we can say that 10 plus 2 will be there so that will print 12 firstly the addition is done and then the value is assigned similarly we can do for b minus equals to a also and then we can also do it for changing the values of b division b modulo division and then for raising the power that is if i raise the power b raised to the power equals to a that means it will perform the exponential power calculation on the operator and assign the value to the left operand so what it's going to do is we know that the value of b here is 20 and that will be raised to the power to something the value of a and the output will be displayed so let us now execute this particular java program and see how it works so here you can see a certain change in the previous program that i have initialized the value of a as 10 and the value of b as 20 and i have initialized a new variable as c now we have already previously system dot out print ln statement and now we are going to just do a similar kind of changes so firstly what i am going to do what i discuss is particularly assigning the value with the help of equal to operator so that is c equal to a that's going to be printed first next what i am going to do is i am going to do the plus equals to operator so that i am going to operate on a and b and how can we do that we can just change the syntax in this particular parenthesis and print here b equal to a similarly we can do for next that is b minus equals to a and here you can also change it that b now we are going to do about the multiplication equals to a and then we are going to do it for the division purposes that a sorry b will be here because b has a larger value so b divided equals to a it will return the values and next we are going to use another sop statement and for that what we are going to do is we are going to change here the values and we're going to use it for the modulus division firstly that if b is done modulo division equals to the value of the variable a so that will be done of this particular modulus division here and next we are going to use the power also so for that what we are going to do is we are going to raise the particular power that is b power equals to a so this is the complete program and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to execute this program and see what the output comes for that you need to firstly save the program and then you're going to run this file from here as you run this file here you can see a certain values are printed and what are those you can see here that a value of a is assigned to the variable c so that comes to be 10 similarly the addition firstly added and then put it on so that is 30 20 210 the value of the modulo division comes out to be zero because yes it will not give any particular remainder when it is divided so it is zero and then the power function so this is how the assignment operators work in java so so in logical operator there are three types of logical operator present in java that is logical and operator logical or operator 
and logical not operator now this is actually the implementation of the digital system the gates which we have studied that is we have studied about and gates also that if both the values of operands are true then it is going to return the true value similarly for the logical or operator also is there for printing the value that it is actually a boolean kind of an operator that either if either of the values of the operator is true then it is going to return true and then the logical not operator so this is the gate implementation of the logical or operator which we have also studied in digital designs also that how if any one of the value comes out to be true then it gives the true value and similarly for the logical not operator it actually gives the value true if an operand is false that is it complements the value it actually complements the not operator and it returns true if the operator is actually false then it returns that particular value that is the complement of the operand the exact opposite that it's returned so there are three types of operators and the implementation which we do in java program of and is with two and person signs or we do is with two pipes and not is with done with the exclamatory mark so for example we have a particular value of int a which we have initialized as let's say 10 and in that particular system dot out print and statement what we have done is we have taken the value of a less than 10 and use the and operator to check what that if value of a is less than 20 also so these two operators actually work on this that and operators functions on this then this will of course return you the value as false next we need to check for logical or and what is thus it returns true if any one of the variables or any one of the operands is true that means it is going to first check for 10 and then if you operate that particular with 20 also then it is going to return the true value because yes one of the operands is actually true next it is going for logical not operator then we are going to operate as a and check it for 10 and we are going to check it for 20 also so when we checked using the and operator the value returned to us is false but in the not it actually complements the value which is generated so false complement actually will be true so this will return us the true value now let us execute this particular program in java and see how it works now here you can see that i have written the code firstly i have initialized a variable 10 a equals to 10 and then i have checked with the help of the and operator logical and logical not and logical or so now i will run this particular code and see that what is the output and as i have already told it returns as the boolean function it is a boolean operator so firstly it returns as the false value next one condition is true that is this particular condition is true hence it returns as true value logical or and the not actually reverses the particular answer which is generated so this particular i have used the system and then it generates the true value because it does the negation of a particular statement or true if the operator is particularly false and similarly vice versa so we have discussed about the logical operator also and now next we are going to discuss about the relational operators in general now the relation operator it compares the two values on either side of them and decides the relation among them assuming that we are having the same values only a is 10 and b we take as 20. now firstly the relation operator is equals to equals to this is the first operator now if the values of two operands are equal then the condition becomes true that means if in the particular sop statement i am writing as a equals to equals to b system dot out print ln statement and it is also a boolean kind of function so it is also going to return either true or either false value so definitely it is going to return us false value because a is not equals to equals to v the values are not same next if we have equals to equals to then we must have a not equals to operator also now if i write in the sop statement a not equals to b then it is going to return me the value true that yes this particular statement or can be said the case is true because the value is not equal to b next is we are going to check with the greater the greater than operator if the value of the left operand is greater than the value of right then the condition becomes true for example, if I am writing here the value of A is greater than B in the SOP statement, then it is going to return me not true or the false it is going to return me because obviously 10 is not actually greater than 20.
so the next greater than after than comes is smaller so smaller value if i write that a is smaller than b in the sop statement then it is going to return me the value true next we have is greater than equal to now if the value of the left top print is greater than or equal to the value of the right top print then the condition becomes true but here it is neither greater than nor equal to so the value will become false similarly we have check for less than equals to also to check if the value is less or equal to so this condition is true yes the value of a is actually less than b whether it's not equals to but the condition is true because yes the value of let operand is less or and we have studied in the logical operator that or actually suggest if one of the conditions is true so this condition is true hence it is going to print true value so now let us execute this particular program and see how it works so in the previous program we have only one variable initialized so next i'm going to initialize another variable that is b equals to 20 so the next variable is also initialized and firstly what we are going to check for we are going to check for the equal to equal to so let us check if the value of a is equals to equals to b the first condition is given in the next sop statement i'm going to check for if the value of a is not equals to b so not equals to b next we are going to check for if the value of a is greater than b so value of a is greater than b and then again in an sop statement what we have is next we are going to write for checking the values of a less than b so that is also done next we have other two operators that is for less than equals to or greater than equals to so we are going to use the system dot out print ln statement for checking next we are going to check for the greater than operator greater than equal to b semicolon and similarly we are going to check for the less than equals to also that is or operator is used in both the condition and if one of the condition is true then it is going to return us that the value is true so these are all the operators which i have written and next what i am going to do is firstly okay there is an s missing so here you can see that I have written the complete code and next I am going to save this code and then I am running this particular code in the console and here you can see the values return. Firstly for checking A equals to equals to B. Is 10 equal to 20? No, so it has returned me the false value. Similarly A not equals to B. Yes, that condition is true, so it has returned me true value. A is greater than B. No, 10 cannot be greater than 20, so it has returned you the false value. A less than B. Yes, this condition is true, so hence it has returned you the true value. Next, if you want to check that greater than or equal to, so neither 10 is greater or not 10 is equals to 20, hence it has returned you the false value. Similarly, for checking less than or equal to, so one condition is true, hence it has returned you the true value. So by executing this program, we come to the end of the relational operators and we have discussed about the relation operators in java next we have unary operator so what are the unary operators in java now unary operators are the one that needs a single operand and are used to increment a value decrement or to negate a particular value that means it is having only one operator as the name suggests unary so unary operator means that it needs a single operand to operate now what does it does it can either increment the values it can decrement the values and it can negate that means invert a boolean value also for example if we take the value of a as 10 and then if i want to increment the value of a 
then I have to use in the SOP statement system dot out statement that a plus plus. So what is going to return to me a that is the value is 10 and it is going to be incremented. So that going to be returning me 11. So this is going to be returning the increment that increments the value by one. Now there are post increment and pre increment operator also that is it is a post increment operator and this is the pre increment the value is incremented then printed. Similarly, there is for decrement also if a minus minus that means the value will be decremented by one and that will return you the answer. Similarly, you can use the pre decrement minus minus a operator also to check the values. Now, if I want to check that the negation of any particular or inversion of a boolean value, for example, there is no variable as if I insert a boolean variables also here that particularly if I declare another variable with the data type boolean b and I set the value as false and then in the system dot out print ln statement what I give is to negate the value of b so what it is going to print it is going to print the value that has been there so if I have given the value false there then it is going to print the true because this is the unary operator for negating the value or to invert any particular boolean value so now let us execute this also and see how unary operators work in java so firstly i am going to initialize two values so int a value i am taking as 10 and then i am going to initialize another value of boolean data type b and the value which i am giving the boolean data type here is false so let us see how negation will actually work for the unary operator so these are the two values which I have given and next what I'm going to do is with the help of system dot out print ln statements I'm going to execute all the particular operations which we have seen in the operators unary that is post increment pre increment post decrement pre decrement and then invert a boolean value so I have to write the system dot out print you can actually select from here also if you want to reduce the time of the code and in the print ln statement firstly what I'm going to write is I'm going to check the incremented value of a next what I'm going to do is to check the pre increment value that what it's print after the increment is done so let us see system dot out dot print ln and then I'm going to enter the value firstly increment and then print the variable a next we are going to check for the decrement operator that how it operates for that we have to firstly check for a minus minus so here you can see that I have written the two statement for the firstly post decrement and then pre decrement and now I'm going to check for the invert of a boolean value on an operator so for that also we have to write a system dot print ln statement to check that the invert operator on unary actually works or not so for that also we are writing a system dot out print ln statement and then i want to actually negate the value which has been given to the variable b boolean value variable b so i have written the code and now i'm going to save it and next i'm going to run this particularly unary class file so as I do that in the console window here you can see that a is incremented firstly and then printed. So that prints the value to be a plus plus that is 10 here only when you again run this particular code then the value will be printed. Next is increment is done previously and then the value is printed so here you can see the value is printed like this. Similarly, you can see for the decrement and then for the negation here you can see the value is negated that is not equals to b which we have printed to invert the boolean value and the inversion of the first boolean value given was in the initialization was false so it has printed true. So by the end of this video we have so in this particular program we have seen the execution for the unary operators and next we are going to study about the bitwise operators in java. So we are done with the so we are done with the unary operator and the next operator in Java is bitwise operator. Now bitwise operation directly manipulate the bits. 
it operates on the bits of the values which are given in all computer numbers are represented with bits we know that all the numbers and the number system in the computer is actually represented with bits in the series of zeros and one every number every particular word is actually represented in bits in fact pretty much everything in computer is represented by bits so we are assuming here two values for example i am so here i am assuming the value firstly of a as 58 and b i am uh, taking the value as 13 so firstly i'm going to write the bit format or exactly in the bits how it is represented 58 in the binary format so 58 is actually represented as 1 1 1 0 1 0 so this is the representation of 58 and 13 is represented as 1 1 0 1 this is the binary representation of 58 and 13 next firstly we are going to in the bitwise operator the operator are classified as bitwise and bitwise or bitwise xor and the complement now the particular bitwise and operator what it does it is quite similar to the logical that means logical operators also check for two conditions if both the conditions are true then only it returns the true that is logical and similarly the bitwise it returns the bit by bit and of the input that is actually done the and of the input and then returns you the value that means if both the values are different here you can see the first bit of 58 0 and it is 1 so the values are different and it is going to return you 0 when the values are same then only it's going to return you 1 so for example if the bitwise and operator is applied here on this particular 58 and 83 here i'm using the bitwise and operator is applied so the both the conditions are not different not same hence it is going to return you 0 1 0 again 0 0 1 again 0 1 1 it is going to return you 1 the rest here the numbers are not there for 13 so let us assume that these are also 0 this is a 4 bit representation only which i have taken so it is going to return 0 so it is discarded there is no use of it this is the number which is returned and it is actually 8 so you will not get this bit format return you will get the number only because you have given the number in the initialization of the java program this is how bitwise and operate now bitwise or operator or operator operates if any one of the condition value there is actually a value called one then it will return the one or it returns the or value if any one condition is true then it will return one so in this particular program or the values which i have taken here you can see here that firstly the value zero one it is going to take return the value as one similarly one zero it is going to return the value as one zero one again one now if both the values are 1 then what is going to do it is going to return you a 0 it is going to again return you 1 again 0 1 then it is going to again return you 1 so this is how it is going to return all the ones because the values are different and the condition is satisfied the or operates like that only so it will return you 1 1 values only and return you actually the decimal format of this particular binary number next we have the operator the xor operator that is the bitwise xor operator this actually returns the XOR value of the input values which are given. That is A XOR B, it returns that particular value. So we are going to execute all this in our Java program and see how the output actually comes. Similarly, there is also a negation of bitwise operator for that we use this particular symbol for the complement. Now what does a complement does? It returns the ones complement. That means all the bits are reversed. So this is actually applied on only one particular operator. For example, if I am applying that XOR operator on the value A, so all the bits will be reversed. That means the zeros will be reversed with the ones. So what is there? 58 is 111010. So it will be returned as 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. It will be returned like this. And then the value will be checked after doing the ones complement. It returns the ones complement of the all bits reversed and going to return you the decimal number which is given. So now let us execute this particular program and see what are the values returned. So here in this p1 package only we are checking for all the operators so here i'm going to create a new class and i'm going to name that class as bitwise and i'm also going to select the public static void main you can select this method so that there is no need to rewrite all the code again so this particular code is written what you have to just write is the initialization of values and the sop system dot out print ln statement so firstly i'm going to initialize the value of a and the value of a i'm going to give as 
58 which we have taken in our example similarly i'm going to initialize the value of b and the value i will take as 13 and next what i'm going to do is i'm going to write the system dot out print ln statement for all the operators which we have discussed in the bitwise and when i do that print ln and then firstly what we are going to do is we are going to check for a and b for bitwise similarly with the help of again the sop statement system System dot out print ln. We are going to check for bitwise and and using the semicolon. And next we are going to check for the XOR operation also. So with that system dot out print ln. And next what I'm going to write is the XOR that is A cap B. And the last which we have is the complement for checking the complement and it is operating on only one variable. So let us take A only. Only one operator it operates, it generates the complement. You can check for any value, you can also check for B also. If I am checking for A, you can also check for B when you do this particular code. So A, firstly I am going to use the negation of it and then I am going to check. So this is the complement of A that will be returned now i have saved this particular program and now let us execute this program so when i run this particular code here you can see the values which are generated that is firstly i have shown you all the theoretical part and has discussed about the values generated which are quite same that all the values will be checked in the bitwise and operator for the sequence of zeros and one it is going to return zero if there is any one matching sequence that is zero zero or one one then it is going to print the one value so that is actually generates the binary format but it returns you the value in the integer because you have done in the integer format only you have given the integer values so this is how bitwise operator work in java next we are going to discuss with the ternary operator so we are done with the bitwise operator and next we have ternary operator now the ternary operator is actually a conditional operator the conditional statements which we are going to discuss but this is actually a conditional operator and what does it does it that decreases the length of the code while performing con comparison or conditional that is you do not need to write a long substance of code for checking the condition the ternary operator in java reduces the code this method is an alternative for using the if else or nested if else statements the order of execution for that operator is left to right so what is the syntax of this particular operator firstly you're going to mention a condition that i'm representing here as c with a question mark then there will be statement one a colon statement two and then the semicolon so the condition is actually checked on both these statements condition is an expression to be evaluated which returns a boolean value statement one is a statement that to be executed if the condition results in true state or else condition two will be or the statement two will be executed for example if condition is checked between operators which you are given then if it returns a true state then this particular statement will be executed or else it is going to return you this false statement if the condition checked comes to be false then it is going to return you the s2 statement so this is how actually ternary operators work for example here you can see there if we take uh, three values for example if i take the value of if I take the value of A is equals to 20, B I take the value as 10 and C value I take as 30. Three operators I am taking and I am also initializing a value as res or result. Now firstly we are checking the condition that if A is greater than B then what to be done? You can again use another condition here also and then give the several statement and if A is also greater than C it is actually checking the greater or the maximum among the three numbers then what i am going to do is return either a if the condition is false then return c then you have to check for b greater than c and after that return if b is greater than return b statement one or else you can return the statement two that is c 
so this is how you can check the maximum from this three numbers and how can we print printing i think that will be quite clear to you with the help of sop statement system dot out print ln statement you can print the result that is stored in this variable or in this particular value so this is how the condition is checked for the greater among three numbers that if a is greater than b and a is also greater than c then execute this first statement if the condition is false then you can execute this c statement but you need to check firstly that if b is greater than c then you have to execute b or else you can execute the c give the value of c as the greater number which is quite obvious that c will be the greater number but conditions are checked here so you know the looping concept and the if else statement concept all have been reduced nested if else statement that you have to write and rewrite the code again and again that if a is greater than b then system dot out print ln a is greater a is greater than c so that particular code is reduced with the help of ternary operator in java so now let us execute this program and see how it works now here you can see that I have written the code for the execution of turn the operators. I have given the conditions also and the statement also. Now I'm going to save this particular code. And as my code is saved, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this particular turnary.java file. And as I run this particular file, you can see And as I run this particular turnary.java file, you can see here the greatest among the three number that is 30, which is introduced in the variable C is printed. So this is how ternary operators work in Java. Now we are left with the last operator in Java, that is the shift operator. Now we are left with the last operator in Java, and that is the shift operator. So the last operator, that is the shift operator in Java, shift operator are used to shift the bits of the number it is used to shift the bits of number of the particular bit shifting is done with the help of shift operator now it can be shift to the right side also and to the left side also so firstly in the classification it is the left shift operator for that we use this particular sign for the right shift operator we use this sign and for the unsigned right shift operator, we use three particular caps and that is this right shift operators. Now, hereby they are multiplying or dividing the actual number. Now, the syntax is firstly, you have to mention that what particular number and it is going to shift it how many bits or how many places it is going to get shifted. For example, if you are taking a number, if I am taking a number as 58, then this will be firstly fit into the binary format and for example in the sop statement if i am giving this then what does it means that the number 58 in the binary is going to be left shifted to two bits that means two bits from the left side of this particular binary representation will be discarded and the number will be shifted and the blank spaces will be filled with the zeros similarly for the right side also it is going to be disregarding the two bits from the right side and filling the left side blank spaces with the zeros and for the right side shift of the unsigned bit that is also quite same but there is one change in the function that we use the different signs for the unsigned right shift so now let us execute this program also and see how the java operators of the bitwise or the shift operators actually work so here you can see that I have written the code and now I'm going to firstly save it. I have saved the file and next I'm going to run this particular code. So for that here you can see option for run ternary and I have written the code in the same file only. Here you can see that the bits are shifted and that particular binary representation is actually checked with that is it a representation of any particular decimal number then it is returned. So this is how the shift operators work in java for shifting the number of bits either to the left side or the right side so by the end of this video we have studied about the types of operator in java there is arithmetic assignment logical relation unary bitwise ternary and shift operator for more concepts of java we will look into upcoming videos